I never met someone, met someone like you. For me, the goal is always chills or tears. Yeah, it's like it's like getting 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 chills or like making somebody cry from listening to it. That's always right. when I'm like, okay, this is like probably probably done. Pretty much. That's yeah. It. It <laughs> yeah. Get for, honestly, that's how you make great music. Yeah, right? yeah, Ooh, yeah. Someone. That's that's always a goal for me because because I, I, like I feel like that's literally your body and your subconscious telling you this is something special, you know. Two forty-two of A two. Oh wow, two forty-five of A two. The show. Actually, yeah, two forty-five. Two hundred forty-five days we've been doing this, John. Traveling around the world. Oh, that's with awesome. A lot of people. Yep. And, and yeah. let's see. If you haven't heard Ellie say it already, <laughs> we're joined today yes. by the epic JT Roach. JT, welcome on the show. Let the world know. Welcome who on the guys, show. What you do. Thanks for having me. Yes. Uh, so yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Awesome. Go ahead and let the world know who you are and what you do. That's right. Okay. Um, yeah, my name's my name's JT Roach. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, I currently live in Los Angeles, California, in Studio Amazing. City. Um, I'm I'm a singer, songwriter, producer. Signed with BMG Chrysalis. Um, and um, yeah, I have my own project. I write for other people's projects. Um, I spend all day, every day, um, writing music and performing music, and that's my passion. And that's that's cool. what I do. Ali, can we pause it for a second? My bad. I've Sorry about well, that. I do still hear it. Sorry, I do still hear it. Technical right. difficulties happen to Techn the best shows, and it happened on the best show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Amazing. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, JT Roach, how's it going? Love your music from Wisconsin. Our first guest from Wisconsin. True. Um, Thank you. He's our first guest from yeah. Wisconsin. And it's um, crazy. I, did growing up in Wisconsin like um, really like kind of influence your music and the vibes of your music? Uh, yeah. You know. Um, I, I have a lot of musical influences, but um, being from Wisconsin, uh, you know, I, I always think of, I always mention Boney Vare when people talk about Wisconsin because he's a huge yes. role model for me. He's from mm -hmm. Eau Claire, Wisconsin. I'm from Madison, but, you know, um, he's definitely somebody who I admire and look up to musically mm -hmm. um, and just the way he carries himself. So um, when I think of Wisconsin music, that's probably one of the first things that I think of is Boney Bear in the culture oh. that he's he's made around his music. So. Cool. And then now you live in LA, right? I do. Yeah. It's I'm different in different vibes than LA. it is. Yeah. In Wisconsin, right? Yeah, it is. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in studio city. Um, you know, it's like living in a different country compared to Wisconsin <laughs> pra practically. Um, but it's, it's, um, it's much higher energy here, which is both creatively inspiring. Um, but it can also be, you know, I'm, I miss home a lot. I miss my family in Wisconsin and Wisconsin's a, a little more grounding, mm -hmm. a little bit slower paced. Um, which, you know, has its positives and negatives. But I, I really do love Los Angeles. I've been here for over six years now. Um, and um, I, I love it here. And I, and I cool. love that there's a lot of awesome stuff happening in the music industry here. So, Amazing. right. But you can cool. always move back to and just do what you're doing <laughs> in Wisconsin, no? Or do yeah, you I, th I think so. I think, you, I think if I did that, it would be a different kind of, um, a different kind of business for me. Um, you know, I'd be a little bit further removed from some of the pop stuff that I do. Um, but I, you know, I could still be in a room writing on guitar. I don't need anybody to do that. So, um, you know, I, I think eventually um, I could see moving back there. I think for for the, you know, next few years, at least I'm still going to be in Los Angeles. Um, I see. Cool. Working on working on a lot of stuff here. So, so so why is it that this always happens whenever someone who's as talented as you know you are wants to make it out in the music industry? Why LA? Why do they always go to Los Angeles? Right. So I, I always tell people that if you're serious about making music, um, Los Angeles and Nashville are both really great places to be. Um, I think being available and being close when opportunities come up is how you get in rooms and how you um, network. You know, I, I really think business is relationships and you never know what's going to spark from a new relationship or, or um, a new contact that you have. And, you know, here, if I get invited to a session, I'm 15 minutes away from it. But if I'm in Wisconsin and, you know, a, an amazing right. artist calls me most of the time they're in LA and studios here, or if it's, you know, um, a country artist, a lot of country is in Nashville. Um, but 
you know, a lot of the big pop stuff that is happening, like top 40 radio stuff is happening here in LA. And, um, you know, the studios are here too in the uh, uh, film industry. Um, so, you know, that whole industry is here as well. And there's a lot of opportunities that come from that as well. So, right. um, cool. yeah. yeah. Um, you said, yeah, you said earlier that um, you're working on pop music, right? Um, is that the kind of music you say you do? And why, how do you even pick what kind of you know, I'm, you work on? I write on guitar, so I try mm. to just let the song dictate where it's going to go. You know, mm. it, sometimes I write, uh, I'll, I'll start writing a song and it feels like a pop song, so I'll write it like a pop song. Sometimes I start writing a song and it feels like a folk song, so I'll write it as a folk song. I really try to let the music take me where it wants to go mm -hmm. um, and just focus on making the song the best version of itself that it can be before, um, you know, before making any decisions about it on the business side. Um, cool. So I, I'm, I'm a big believer in that the song should come first. The song comes first. All right. So cool. yeah. let's look at the song a bit more in depth. So there's the lyrics and the song. You say you write the song first, right? So you right, and then you add the lyrics to it. Is it is that the easiest way to make a song for you? Or is it like, what, what are the exact steps that goes into your song making? Right. It's diff. That's the, that's the difficult thing about my job. And the awesome thing about my job is that it's different every single day. Um, you know, as soon as you feel like you have a workflow down, um, it, it's usually a good time to change things up and try something new so that you can get a different result. Um, I think, I'm big on melody. You know, I like to write chords and melody first and know that I have a really great melody and then I work backwards to lyrics, but I also am pushing myself to write, um, to journal more and write poetry and then turn those, the journaling and the poetry into, into melodies and into a song. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of really great songwriters who work that way. Um, historically I do melody first, um, and then work backwards to lyrics, but I also find like the, the, Uh, artists whose lyrics I really admire seem to be doing a lot of journaling and writing like writing phrases and um, sentences from their journaling that feel very real to them and personal and then building from that. So I've been trying to do that more. That's a way that I'm trying to push myself, but there's so many different you, ways. Who, who are you talking about? Um, you know, I have so many influences. Um, um, I'm, I'm really blown away by this artist Jensen McCray right now, who's, who is just popping off on the scene. And, you know, I've seen her TikTok and she's like holding up journals, you know, it's like, this is journal number 21, page 46. Wow. Yeah. And I've never, I've never journaled like that, but the mm -hmm. lyrics that she writes are so, they pull you really into the story because they're so deeply personal to her. Um, and I really think a lot of my other favorite writers in the pop space are like that too. Um, mm -hmm. JP Sachs is a guy who's, um, writing and style i really really admire um you know he writes these lyrics that um just pull you into the story and he wraps them in beautiful melodies and chords and production that really you know it's really just great storytelling is what it is um right i i, I love music that tells a story and pulls you into the story where you almost forget you're listening to music it's just an experience coming at you you know wow yeah wow yeah completely really cool mm -hmm. How do you even start finding a topic to, um, to, to like think about? So you, you write the songs, right? Yeah. For the lyrics and stuff. I feel like there are a lot of themes that are always like in rotation and like, um, like for example, you write a lot, I'll write a lot of love songs, right? Um, how do you even like, how do you get inspirations to come up with so many different songs from um, one topic? Have your heart just completely shattered by somebody? No, I mean, oh. <laughs> there's some, there's, there's, there's some, there's some truth to that. But no, it's, I mean, all, your, all, all your life it's and experience. Inspiration, I guess. Yeah. yeah. No, I'll, I'll, that's that, That's the cliche, anyway. It's mm -hmm. just like you know, you want to write some great songs, go have your heart broken. But the truth, in my opinion, the truth is just mm -hmm. all of life can inspire the art, and all other art that you absorb goes into you know the the bank of that is your mind and it's going to influence the art that you make. So, you know, if you want to make great art, absor absorb and um, consume great art, you know? So I right. try to, I try I to balance working on my stuff with um, listening to great music, watching great movies, list, uh, you know, um, listening to audiobooks, reading books, um, you know, I just try to absorb a lot of great art and it can influence your work. Wow. 
right? Like, control so, your input pretty much, and then yeah, that, control your input. Yeah, totally. Your output should follow through. Yes, I follow, guess. follow through. Yeah, it's, I just, it's totally. I want to comment on that thing we talked about. You said it was the kind of cliche that a bunch of artists, or you have to go through like a heartbreak to make good music. I but I've, no, you don't, I've I don't I don't I don't subscribe to that. I, I was joking mostly. That. Okay, cool. Yeah. No, I'm sure that's a joke. But why does it why does it happen? Because I've noticed it. There are a bunch of great artists that have had some of their greatest music and times where they were at most turmoil. Yeah. Why do you think that happens with um, Adele? Like I right think, at the top of my head. <laughs> right, Taylor Swift, think, Ariana Grande, Kanye yeah. West, to say the least. Right, and I think it's I think it's super relatable for one because everybody gets right. their heartbroken at some point, and it's usually one of the most difficult things that you go through you know mm -hmm. um but i think it's just uh an incredibly vulnerable experience so i think people respond to vulnerability so if you are sharing something that's so deeply personal about your life people kind of want to relate to and root for you because they've gone through that and they know how difficult it is and they know how difficult it is to be vulnerable about something that's so intimate and so private and so um, where you feel so exposed. So I, you know, I think that that's kind of the angle on, on heartbreak, but um, you know, I've been pushing myself to write stuff other than love songs too, because it can be kind of a default too, you know? Um, right. I think naturally, naturally I, I, I love love songs and I write so <laughs> many of them. Um, but I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to push myself lyrically and musically to, to write about other topics and to, you know, Mm -hmm. you know c kind of combine intimate a personal storytelling with sort of more obscure poetic type stuff um when you but, write love songs yeah. i want to ask you this <laughs> do you look at the this like do you tend to describe more in these kind of songs or do you just stick to storytelling purely you know this is how we met this is what's going on and hopefully it ends like yeah that. what's your go-to it's like i love you more um, than the moon loves i don't know <laughs> right i i really don't think that there's any rules other than you know what feels like it's going to um pull emotion out of you and out of others you know i think it's about capturing emotion so i don't you know i have some songs where it's very play by play where you're i'm literally describing <laughs> an event that happened and it's and it's a story that's very literal and you just mm -hmm. wrap it in melodies but i have other stuff that i've done where you know i was just singing and i don't even understand the lyrics and they don't make sense but i know that they feel really good when i listen to them and they feel like the song feels so you know and every any everywhere in between some songs i've written have lines that make a lot of sense and are from an actual event and then they have other lines that are more obscure so there's really no rules but um you know i think you've done i feel like i've done my job successfully when someone listens to the songs and they're the song and they're captivated by it and they're lost in it you know and they feel right. something from it uh listening to, uh here's another question uh from my experience with all the musicians we've had on the guest i want to confirm my theory my final theory of musicians with you. Are you ready? I'm sure. going to say this statement. Just say true or false and then elaborate. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. The best lyrics hit you in the shower. Hmm. I would say, I'd say that's probably true. I, I think that that's, a, I think that that's a, shower. I think there's a, there's a lot of truth in that for sure. I think it's, uh, for me, it's when I'm dry, when I'm doing other things, when I'm driving and when I'm in the shower and my brain isn't thinking about lyrics and I'm just thinking I'm, I'm on a train of thought, I think that's why shower thoughts is a thing is you're, you're very clearly not working mm -hmm. when you're in the shower. So your mind relaxes and you, and your train of thought takes you to new places. And so that's how you come to new ideas. My, you're actually relaxed. My theory behind this is actually, it's almost in the same way you just said, but it's different. I think it's because that's when we're most vulnerable, you know, we're butt naked and uh, <laughs> yeah. Know. So yeah, so because of our physical vulnerability, we mm -hmm. also go through our deepest, you know, thought tracks where our thoughts are also vulnerable. Right. And that's where we come. Yeah. Up with the best ideas or lyrics or whatever it may be artistically. Right. But that's my yeah, theory. Yeah. And I'm glad you, kind of confirmed kind of confirmed kind of yeah 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 i think i mean i i've had ideas that i think are great ideas come uh from all different 
moments and different scenarios. Um, but, but getting a great idea in the shower is totally a known thing. And it happens <laughs> to me for sure. And it happens to so many people that there's definitely a dynamic at play there. Um, I also find when I'm driving is another one too, because I'm focusing on driving, um, for whatever reason I get ideas and, you know, I got to figure out how to capture it. You Why know? is right. driving um, an escape from reality? It happens with me too, for some reason. Yeah. Like a, I don't know. I haven't, road. I haven't figured that out. I think it's cause you're engaged in something. So like the analytical part of your brain is, you know, very focused, but, um, the part of your brain that, um, the emotion relaxes a little bit while you drive and you're, you're kind of on autopilot focusing right. on something. So the, your brain can kind of wander in a different way, kind of similar to like when you're in the shower, I would think. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I find, I find a, like if I'm on a highway, um, I find I, I get ideas then too. And also you're listening to music a lot too. And true. you can get inspiration from listening to something else and kind of vibing off of it too. That's very true. Amazing. Uh, well, um, JT, uh, I just want to, so we talked about your lyrics a little bit. I want to hear about your music a little bit more. Uh, you're so good on the guitar, first of all. Oh, thanks, um, man. Yes. Uh, what guitar do you use? Can you tell us? <laughs> um, yeah, here, I can show you. Yes! Um, yeah. <laughs> Let's go! Uh, yeah. So this Amazing. is what I, I play this a lot. This is a Gibson Les Paul. Yes! Uh, yeah. yeah, I play, I play this yes. probably more. I play this a lot. Amazing. Um, I have... Mm -hmm. I have a breed love acoustic. Um, I have a breed love acoustic in this in this closet back here. This is a uh, what is this even? This is a Taylor classical acoustic. Wow. Um, I'd like to just I, say I, you have the same guitar except for the color scheme. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, love I, Les Pauls. I, I love Les Pauls. I don't know why. I just do. Yeah, they're like they're like buttery, you know. They're so smooth. They're so they smooth. I, I I love my Les Paul, um, and then that Taylor classical acoustic. I just playing a classical is relaxing. It's like easy on your fingers and it's just smooth and easy on your ears. So I like to work out ideas on a on a classical. And then I have a a Breedlove electric acoustic that I I've had for like eight years that for whatever reason just sounds magical is, to is me the, is um, that the one where most of your songs come out of like is that is that the mother of i'd say the three the three of those yeah yeah <laughs> pretty Damn. pretty much everything comes comes from those three guitars um Amazing. I, I write on guitar way more than i write on piano i'm, I'm, a, I'm a guitar guy yeah uh, we like ali i think is a piano guy here but i definitely yes. am a guitar <laughs> or strings let's say like i have mm -hmm. a uh, this is an We'll call it an Arabic oh, guitar. Oh, you should show. You should show it to him. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'd love to see it. I won't play on yeah. the show, but this is like an Arabic <laughs> instrument, right? And oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's gonna be cool. Some later, but my <laughs> is like that's cross, super cool. It's across mm -hmm. the room right now, but I'll get it if you want to see it. That's that's <laughs> my baby. That's my baby. That's like, very amazing. cool. Yeah. Love it. It's just yeah, amazing. So, what is it that you do when you write a melody or you come up with a melody? Is it like music theory where you say, okay, well. C minor goes great with G, so we'll play on those. Or how is it? Or you just play random stuff, and you're like, "Ooh, that sounds." Yeah, cool. I you know uh, there is um, techniques and tips and tricks that um, I've learned from working in the industry and from and collaborating with people. I definitely would classify myself as somebody who just operates on instinct. I haven't had classical training i don't really know music theory i learned like a little bit of it but i like that i don't know a lot because i like to be able to just feel it and and go and and be able to trust my gut like that feels really cool um as opposed to like you know when i examine this visually it, it looks right to me i'm more like like put put it on the speakers and let me hear it back at me and and i can just go with my gut as to whether i like it or not you know um, I, I definitely you know? just operate on my gut and on instinct. And how do you know entirely. If you've, you've, you're done with a song, right? You've written lyrics, done yeah. everything. And like, what's because we ask a lot of our musical guests this question mm -hmm. because I feel like everyone has a different answer. So what's what's yours? For me, the goal is always chills or tears. Yeah, it's like That's it's like getting like getting ch getting chills or like making somebody cry from listening to it. That's always right. when I'm like. Okay, this is like probably, probably done. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, that's, yeah. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. get any simpler, honestly. That's how you make great music. Yeah, right? yeah. Move yeah. Someone. That's mm -hmm. that's always a goal for me because I because I, like I feel like that's literally your body, and your subconscious telling you, this is something special. You know. I mean, 
And how if has anyone ever tiered to your songs? I think someone has if you've come to this like conclusion. Yeah, yeah. I've I've had I've that. I've played songs for friends and had them cry before. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Well, yeah, your music oh. has the power to unlock something subconsciously. <laughs> maybe, that. yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's crazy. That's just yeah. crazy. So, what's the story behind that? Go All ahead. Right. <laughs> Let the world know well, which which one, which one of your friends did it? Which one cried? Which which uh, I I played uh Bloom for um, uh, I played Bloom my song Bloom for a friend and and she cried. Mm -hmm. Um, um, I also played Tipsy Love. Wow for a friend back home in Wisconsin who cried listening to it. Um, yeah, just, you know, and then I, I like most recently I have a single coming out in less than two weeks mm -hmm. on monster cat um, with a couple of special artists. I can't announce mm -hmm. yet, but um, <laughs> the, when I heard the final mix, Tom Norris uh, do, did his final mix. Uh, who's an incredible mixing engineer. Um, when I heard it, I, I got full body chills like two or three times listening to it. And I was like, okay, yeah, it's, it's done. Let's go. It's, it's perfect. It's That's ready. How you know. That's how yeah. do you feel when you see people reacting the way they do to your music? Right. Like, uh, <laughs> what, what awesome. Your mind? That's the whole, that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah. I just, that's the whole point is just to try to make something beautiful that people can enjoy and that they can have a moment to. It's, it's really simple. You know, that's, that's what motivates me to, to make great music is just, knowing somebody can put it on and, and it can change their day or they can have a, a beautiful moment listening to it. Amazing. Right. Right. So that's, you think it's mostly music that makes people cry that way, or you think it's the lyrics or you think it's the combination of both. What is it? Um, Just that makes people cry in general. Yeah, no, I'm talking, I'm talking about like when it comes <laughs> to like, when it comes to right? hearing a song Yeah. Or in general, right? Like, is it hearing a phrase that someone relates to that triggers them? Or is it like the melody that triggers them? That's a good question. I'd mm -hmm. have to think about that. I think mm -hmm. I've had somebody describe it as, um, you know, writing, writing a great lyric or creating something that feels that makes you feel something is like walking into uh, an empty room and saying something. So it's like, so I think he hearing something oh, wow. that hearing something that captivates <laughs> you is like having something told to you that you didn't even know you needed to hear, you know? Right. So I feel like, it can feel vulnerable and also just like beautiful and it can move you in that way. Um, but I don't know. It's, wow. it's different. So, some, right. I've, I've also had songs that hit me super hard cause they were super dark and confronting. Um, I've had songs hit me because it reminded me of somebody who passed. I've had songs that, you know, uh, hit me because it was, it made me think of a heartbreak and I, and you know, you can really relate to something. So, it's just like, it, I feel like if you're just really captivated by it and it mm -hmm. really moves you, it can move you to tears, you know? Amazing. All right, cool. And how long have you been learning the guitar now? What's your oh, man. guitar I, story? I start, yeah. I'm 33. I started playing guitar in fourth grade and um, sucked for a long time and slowly got better. And I really don't even see myself as a guitarist. I feel like I'm a, I, I would classify myself as like a campfire guitarist. Like I'm I'm good enough at guitar to be able to like play it and get a song out. But I, I have no ambitions of being like a John Mayer, like best guitarist ever or anything like that. I just want to be able to sit and like write on a guitar and be able to like sing, sit and perform songs for people on guitar. And I'm working at it. Like I, I want to get better and be more and more captivating playing live for people. But, um, you know, how do you describe I'm, your guitaring? Like, what do you describe my, as on the guitar? um i like guitar guitar. It's pretty cool like that's because i describe myself as a play to yourself full stop kind of guitar <laughs> play to yourself that's, pretty much yeah, yeah some friends right. maybe. maybe right because it's hard it's really hard to get like the piano it's easy to like have that gradual like increase in knowledge you learn a few chords you don't know how to move things around but the guitar i feel like a lot of people are like not great and then you have to cross the threshold to get good do you feel like that for yourself when you were learning it you're like, um, I, I always say the first right. month is, is the most difficult. Like once you have calluses on your fingers and you can play <laughs> your major right. and minor chords, then you're off and running. Like, you know, learn your, your main major and minor chords and then go learn some of your favorite songs just in the simplest way. And then, and then I think you're off and running. That's how, that's how I like to approach it is like, just start playing songs that you like and learn them one at a time. And you gradually gain knowledge, but I'm sure there's somebody who's was trained classically that would just, 
scoff at me saying that you should learn that way because you know i'm sure being i'm sure it would have been dope if i was classically trained soon and like knew how to read music and uh, play like you know. i never took any lessons when it came to guitar i feel like it's something that's very uh uh emotional and very you know deep down like it's uh it's 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 artistic right and it's, it's yeah they artistic we i don't like to mix science and art too much that's why when i yeah, yeah. learned any of my instruments i was very self-taught and whatever i discovered along the way is whatever i discovered right. other than that like i don't want to have that music theory or anything behind it <laughs> i learned on youtube pretty much you know? <laughs> how to play a song on youtube and that's it's a great it place is. to learn it's an awesome place yeah. to learn I mean, why much. not yeah yeah learn on youtube mm. that's pretty cool you basically yep. you keep the system to it and mm -hmm. you are playing guitar right but yep it's an awesome other, place to learn yeah i don't know what's your thought on the whole process of what i just said like <laughs> the whole Learning music and YouTube. art mixing science and all that shit mm -hmm. like what's what's your take on that i think um you know i i do think about this like um learning music theory and learning why hit songs are really great songs why they are great and i think it's i think it's smart to implement some technique and some into um study music too a little bit like like i write pop music and i, I want to learn why certain pop songs feel really great you know right. and i think i think thinking about those things it's just like tools for for your toolbox you know it's um ideas that can spark something special and can be used towards the goal of making something special you know so i'm i think it's smart to do that um mm -hmm. i don't think you have to use those things and i think you can make something captivating and beautiful just you know, by going with your instinct and flow too. Um, I've seen it done both way, ways. So th there's really no right way to do anything um, right or wrong way, but there are, you know, more consistently successful ways to write a pop song. And there are quote unquote rules sure. that exist in pop that it's probably pretty smart to take into consideration. Like, you know, it's one of those things where it's smart to learn the rules so that you know how to break them and when you are breaking them. Um, mm hmm know how to not break them I, I I, something kind of similar on a similar train of logic you talked about like the music business and like sometimes you just want to be an artist but then sometimes you have to be like smart and business and entrepreneurship to sell yourself and sell your music is it ever like um how do you how how do you learn it like because i'm assuming you started off as an artist was it hard for you to learn the music business i'm still learning the music business it's it's a right. tough it's a tough business and it's and you have to be um pretty light on your feet you know um i i've had periods where i was i felt like i was running my business by myself i've had periods with different um people who i felt like were a part of my team I, i'm lucky that i have i feel like i have a really great team right now and people that i'm working really well with and um but the industry's changing really fast you know um when i'm sure you guys have noticed it's songwriters um are kind of struggling to get paid fairly from streaming services and also from the labels and from the artists that they work with, you know, the big thing is like our songwriters aren't getting master share producers are getting producer fees and, and master points, but writers aren't getting points. And Oof. if you, if you really see where the money is going, streaming services are making a lot of money. Record labels are making a lot of money. Artists are making money off of um, what producers and writers are doing. So the culture is, is, or the business is catching up to the culture in the way that, um, the songs come together and I think that it needs to reflect more fairly um, how the songs come together and I think songwriters should be sharing in that um, so it's an, it's an interesting time right now but it's it's an opportunity to be innovative and to, to look at other ways to make money from your from your art I mean if you asked me how I thought the money would go I thought it would be songwriters and you know music makers first and then all the other <laughs> people right like I'm yeah. genuinely surprised of you saying mm -hmm. this is the first time I hear about this, honestly. So yeah. what's the whole situation behind that? How come that's the way it is when, you know, people yeah. like you, your jobs are a lot more important because that's where songs come from initially. Yeah. Um, I think that um, there's a lot that goes into um, a song being released and being promoted and marketed properly and having success. And there's a lot of people who go into the success of the song and it can be already argued in different ways who brings what value um i personally think that songwriters are undervalued right now as far as how the business reflects what goes into the songs and um what 
provides them an opportunity to be successful. Like, for example, I think without the song itself, you can't have a song that is going to be successful. So it's like, it's pretty obvious. Pretty but, much. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. But yeah. Like also, but, yeah. but, you know, it's streaming services also, you know, function a certain way in their businesses and they have certain types of leverage and so do the labels and the labels all in streaming services also invest in the promotion of the song as well so they, they provide value as well so you know it's 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 a hot topic right now and right. i really do i really do think that the business is changing pretty quickly to catch up to the culture of how the industry really is and how the songs really happen so it's an interesting time but i think it's a it's a good time to be innovative too and to think to have an open mind about how you can make money and make a living as an artist and as a how, songwriter. So how do you do it alternatively? So like if it's not coming from the labels and your streams, um, how, like, how can we support artists that? Right. Yeah. I think there's lots of different ways. I think mm -hmm. um, buying merch, um, going to their shows, merch is a great one because it goes pretty much directly to them. Um, go to their shows, follow them on their socials and support their socials and share their socials. Um, you know, tell your friends about them, um, watch, go, go watch their live stream shows. When the pandemic is over, go to their actual shows, um, send them a message and tell them that you support them and that you love what they're doing to keep them inspired. Cause it's tough being an artist sometimes. Um, you know, those, those things are all, are, are all really helpful to artists. Yeah. So yeah. you guys should all go do that. If you don't if, like some reason you haven't right at least you can do is support your artists basically right because totally. they're the ones that make someone. the music without yeah them, totally you wouldn't have the music totally. <laughs> or uh, do two and two <laughs> right you know like go support them yeah mm -hmm. go, go support them. totally man yeah all right so what's, what's um what's the future looking like for jt roach uh this year is going to be really exciting i have a lot of um collaborations planned in the electronic music space um, and I'll simultaneously be releasing those along with my own uh, stripped singer songwriter type songs that I'll be releasing by myself so um, a whole bunch of new music coming out this year that's my main focus but I still am doing a lot of writing and producing for other people and I'm, I'm actually doing a lot more mm -hmm. um, you know pseudo uh, executive writing people's projects where I'm helping them with their projects as a whole um, so that's been a new uh, venture for me that I've been really enjoying. Um, it's a little bit of a struggle to balance all those things, but, you know, one day at a time and just, um, you know, prioritizing what I need to, when I need to, and, and leaning, up, leaning on my team where, where, where I need to has been, has been really great. So it's, it's going to be a really exciting year. There's a lot of awesome songs coming out and I'm writing more can't all wait. the time. I can't look forward wait. to it. Yeah. Forward Thanks to guys. It. Appreciate it. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Um, do you produce your own, do you produce your own music? But I do. Yeah. So my workflow um, is different every time, you know, mm -hmm. some songs come from sessions with other writers and producers. Um, my artist project usually starts with just me writing and producing it by myself. I, I don't consider myself a finisher on production. I'm good at producing a record to, <laughs> to, uh, to about 70 or 80% of the way there. And right. then I, I reach out to um, some of my good friends who are amazing producers and, mm -hmm. and kind of, collaborate with them on getting it to the finish line and then we have a mixing engineer who mix and masters everything so but right. every song every song is different and mm -hmm. i you know i always try to do what's best for the song i don't I'm, i don't feel like i need to do everything myself i do think i enjoy doing the i, I enjoy writing by myself right um as much as i enjoy collaborating with people i think it's important to do both and um i only feel like i'm in balance when i have time to do both of those things because i think they feed off of one another um cool so yeah the reason i asked i wanted to ask you like a little specific question i know you do like some effects with your vocals and your songs right yeah yeah do those do you do you think of those as you're writing the song or does it happen in post when you're editing it you're like oh the sound would be good on it like how do you even think about that you know sometimes i hear it as an affected vocal and i <laughs> write it like that or i even record it like that um or sometimes i will uh, once I have it all recorded, I'll just start um, adding effects. It's different every time, but, um, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. the effects are recorded that way. Sometimes I add them after the, 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 after the fact to uh, make it interesting. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. I think well, we hit our time yeah. stamp. Hit our time stamp here. Can't yeah. wait one day, hopefully, to see you live somewhere. I'm yeah, in LA also. We, 
So yeah, that'd be awesome, man. I'd love to come to a show, honestly. Yeah. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, definitely yes. come out. Um, and when the pandemic is over, there's going to be all sorts of shows and stuff for you to yeah, come out to. So like, everything is going to be pretty cool. And uh, we're excited to see you and your future and how it all goes around. Ladies and gentlemen, awesome. for watching another episode of A to the Show. If you enjoyed the show half as much as we've enjoyed making it for you, subscribe, like, subscribe share, <laughs> do all that good Please. shit. You can follow Garrett. JT Roach yeah. on all his social medias. Link in bio. Link in bio below. Uh, JT, anything you'd like to shout out or let the world know? Thank you guys so much for having me. Um, I, I really appreciate it. It was a great, great convo. Um, Thank you. you got, it was awesome to meet you guys. And um, yeah, follow me on my socials, just JT Roach on Google. I'm, we'll I'm on all of, the, all of the socials. We'll leave a link to all, all of the socials. And so are we. So check so it out. So follow us all. Us. Prima. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh, anyways, mm-hmm. this has been another episode of A to the Show. That's how we sign out. out. And peace. See you guys.